Ray Brown, right along ringside, all ready to go with another big week championship wrestling. Feeling good today and a great looking car, Davey. Oh, we got a good car today. Opening match, Danny Davis will be in here with Sammy Holt. A first look at Sammy Holt. They will be going against Wayne Ferris, and Ferris will have as his partner, handsome Jimmy Bagwell. Mercy. Robert Gibson and Jackie Welch will be in here in the next match. They will be going against the Bounty Hunters with their manager Chuck Malone. Then Tommy Gilbert and Terry Sawyer team to go against Don Fargo and Big Bill Dromo. They'll have Al Green in their corner. Single match, Steve Brody against Coco Ware. The expiration of time match today. The Kelly Twins from Ireland will be going against the King, Jerry Lawler, and the superstar, Bill Dundee. Yes, sir. We hope we have time to get it all in. If not, we'll have to leave some of it out. But by golly, what there will be is going to be action and a half. Davey, looking forward to get it on it. And right now, we better do exactly that and see if we can get... Opening match today is going to be a one fall, 15 minute time limit match. One of the teams in the ring right now. The other making their way to the ring. Wayne Ferris, the handsome one. Handsome Jimmy. Handsome Jimmy. Preaching the gospel according to handsome Jimmy. <laughs> Had a word for all of us on his way to the ring there. As soon as he gets up uh, on the apron, we'll be ready to go with the official introductions for the match. Again, it's a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match. At a total weight of 402 pounds, from Jackson, Tennessee, Danny Davis, and from Cupolo, Mississippi, Sammy Holt. On the right of your screen, at 463 pounds, from Memphis, Tennessee, Wayne Ferris, and from New York City, the Big Apple, handsome Jimmy Vigan. One-fall, 15-minute time limit, referee Bill Mack. He was on the right of the screen, but he, he's, everywhere. he's everywhere. He's everywhere. We're about ready to go. If we can get one of the uh, one of the team of Davis and Holt out of there, this is our first look at uh, Sammy Holt making his first appearance on Championship Wrestling. Danny Davis, very aggressive guy, thinks he can beat anybody in the world, including King Kong, boy, and he'll give you a go. And some Jimmy starting out against Danny Davis, and we're ready. No time, baby. I don't think it was there any doubt that Handsome Jimmy was going to be starting for his team. Well, he was ready when he hit that ring. Against Davis, Danny Davis. Young wrestler, but with a lot of confidence in his own ability. Davis, the end of the middle of the ring. He ran right into Handsome Jimmy waiting for him there. Valiant slammed Davis into the turnbuckle. Into the knee, Wayne Ferris crossed the way. Ferris in there after the tag. Ferris, with right hand, he popped Davis. Up in the air, body slam on Danny Davis. There's a cover by Ferris. One. One counts all he can get. Davis able to break the cover at that point. Tag made, and here he comes back. Mercy, handsome Jimmy Valle. Right hand, Davis hits the mat. Handsome Jimmy with Davis up in the air. Driving body slam. Referee Bill Mack checking the shoulder. Starts the count. Got a one count. Handsome Jimmy picked him up. Tag made and Ferris will be coming back in. A knee lift by Wayne. Davis. Bounces out of the turnbuckle. Ferris back to the corner. Another tag on Handsome Jimmy. Valiant and Ferris tagging frequently. That's good tag team strategy. They've been able to keep Davis away from the tag. His partner Sammy Holt has watched the whole thing from the corner so far. And we are just now at the two-minute mark of the match. Oh, Ferris. A drop with the elbow. Davis moved out of the way. A mistake by Ferris. Davis, kind of wrestler that will capitalize on a mistake. Upper part of the arm in the corner. Over to his corner, he gets the tag. Sammy Holt coming in. Sammy out of Tupelo, Mississippi. Ferris, oh, he dropped into the mat. 
There's some inexperience by Sammy Holt, and it cost him. As Ferris decked him. Handsome Jimmy. Oh, upper part of the arm as Holt came off of there. Handsome Jimmy covers. One, two, three. He got it. Davis on the way to the rescue, but a little late. Look out. Handsome Jimmy. Ooh. Oh. Jimmy threw him right through the rope down under the floor. What a rude introduction to big time oh. wrestling for Sammy Oak. Boy, the Fonz nailed him with that foot over on the rope. He was going at it aggressively, and then the uh, the tag on Handsome Jimmy, and he came in, whipped him into the rope. I thought he was going to throw him all the way through. Oh, I did too. Whipped him so hard when he whipped him in there, and he came off and razored him with that big elbow up there, and boom, one, two, three, and that friend was And then he it. threw and him all the way out. Yeah. 254 at the time. Ooh, 254, and uh, the winners are going to be uh, Handsome Jimmy and the Fonz, and that's the action in that first one. We've got plenty more. Smitty Welch. But this outrageous man, we've got to get out of here and talk to the Handsome Jimmy Valley. Right out of the Big Apple, and here comes Handsome Jimmy. Musty, baby, musty. Introduce a young fella up there uh, to big time wrestling. You kind of took that Sammy Holt's head off with that big arm in there, Jimmy. Personality has come out that you are now into the music business. Huh? Has some Jimmy wants some action. Woo, musty, baby. I love it. You know, Daddy. Burt Reynolds and Sandy Field just dropped Handsome Jimmy off at the studio this morning, Daddy. You know, I think Burt slipped up Handsome Jimmy a little something, baby, because Handsome Jimmy hasn't been able to close his baby blue eyes in 48 hours. I think the man gave Handsome something, and I feel good. I feel like doing it, Daddy. I feel like doing it to the best, baby. Woo! I feel good this morning, baby. You know something? I heard, I heard Burt lean over to Sally. He said, Sally, let's watch Handsome. Boogie, woogie, woo! I love it, I love it, I know that you've had uh, some of your intimate friends that you've told us about in the past in the music field, and uh, I guess that had some kind of influence about Handsome Jimmy. For sure, you know Bob Seger and myself, Handsome. We just sold our Madison Square Dog Garden, baby, three weeks ago. It was the, it's a record that it's a record for our first indoor concert, baby. We. The gate was $340,000. They held 25,000 people indoor, baby. Bob Seger and Handsome Jimmy in concert. Woo, baby. Do it, baby. We, uh... You got a little clip right here, baby. I want to get it on. I just want to say something to all my ladies out there. Just be cool, baby. Lay back. Don't jump out of them pantyhose and dig it, daddy. Yeah, we do have uh, some videotape. Look. Jack! 
place you can hear this record daddy is where the music's at fm 100 with ron olsen daddy i want to say something right now baby this is what's happening one shot of this record daddy one shot of this record baby it's like taking up a, a whole pound a whole pound of columbia gold a whole pound daddy and digging it daddy can you believe it baby Woo! joined by the king the superstar that was great handsome very good, baby. You know, King, you only say that, baby, because it's the gospel, Daddy. It's the gospel. That's him, that's him, that's him. Hey, man. That's him, that's him. Hey, come back there for a minute, Jack. <coughs> why listen, listen. Hey, why don't you and the King get a concert going together, man? Handsome Jimmy and the King. Yeah. That'd be cool, baby. That'd be cool, you know. A concert with Handsome Jimmy and the King. I want to tell you what happening. The King could start the show. He could play some of that hillbilly rock, you know, that Ernest Tubb. You know that Ernest Tubb? He's going like hillbilly heaven. And Handsome Jimmy, come on and smoke, baby. He can smoke that. He can smoke it something like uh, meatloaf. Two out of three ain't bad with Bobby Singer. Woo! That's it, baby. I know that. You know what this is, Lance? What you got? Now, you both know that Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee love women. We love them more now, now from this room. Now, this here is a partition, because we do believe that Heather Feather stayed with the bear for three minutes, and she gets to wrestle a man, and the king she believes it, it and I believe it, and if anybody else wants to believe it, just tell them to sign the partition, I believe she can get the match. Mm -hmm. Would you hang on to this and just get anybody, okay. any of the rest yeah. of you want to sign it? What we want to do with that, Lance, is... Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, we talked to Heather Feather before the match because, really, I would like to see this match. A woman wrestling man, you know, I don't particularly want to wrestle her, but I'd like to see her wrestle somebody. So what we did, we told her, you, you remember Sam Bass and I, we used to beat the Bears. When we wrestled them, we'd beat the Bear. But I told Heather Feather, I said, look, all you got to do is stay completely away from that bear because he won't attack you. You know, you got to go in there and try to get the bear. And, it, and now the bear can wrestle, but I told her, stay away. She almost got too close a couple of times, but she did stay away. She lasted the three minutes. Three minutes. So now, just like the promotion agreed, she's going to get a match with a man. We believe she should get it, but apparently they haven't found anybody that will wrestle her yet. So what we've got here is a petition, and if anybody else wants to, if anybody else believes and agrees, that she should get to wrestle a man, just leave this out here and let him sign this petition, and then we'll turn that over to the promotion. They'll know that she's got to get a match, okay? Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Well, I'm glad to see you guys are with the uh, women's lib, and I'm sure that Heather Feather appreciates your support in there. Oh, she will. The, uh, the petition, we're going to put it right down here, and if any of the guys want to... Uh, uh, as the wrestlers come out here, they want to express the fact that they uh, they agree the fact that Heather Feather uh, should wrestle a man. They can sign the petition and and uh, join with those who think that she should. We're going to take time. Hey, Chuck, can you get your boys? Chuck, can you get them up in the ring? We're ready, we're ready to go with a match here as soon as they get up in the ring. Hey, let's get them up. I heard Lawler and Dundee out here running their mouth. Hey, I'm the one that got behind Heather Feather. I got behind her all the way. What do they do? They come out here and try to jump on my bandwagon. I'm not going to put up with that. Well, it is true that uh, you did uh, say that you thought Heather Feather ought to have a match with a man. Are you interested in signing the petition? Uh, yes, sir. I'll sign a petition for it. Petition? Right. Yes, sir. Right there. The petition's up here and just sign down the down there. Chuck uh, Malone putting his signature in there to show that he yeah, is behind Heather Feather. Okay, Chuck, thank you very much. Dave, here we go. All right, this match uh, will be a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match. One fall only, 15-minute time limit. Introducing at a total weight of 498 pounds from Tombstone, Arizona, with their manager Chuck Malone, the Bounty Hunter. Going against them in this match, a total of 443 pounds from... Let me, let me interrupt you for just a second, but I see that Chuck Malone... Chuck, I'm sorry, but we made a mistake. I thought we brought out a petition, but it seems we brought out a contract to wrestle Heather. And you signed it, baby. You signed your name to 
to the contract to wrestle Heather Feather, and there it is. No, oh, I just signed that contract. You took me, man. Well, if I can get it, I'll tear it up. We got a match in here. That big old fat thing belongs in the cage. I got to the zoo somewhere. You think I'm going to wrestle? I'm going to play the way off. He did it. Oh, backslide it. He sure did. <laughs> Right never, there. Never finished the introductions. Uh, bounty hunters, of course, going against Robert Gibson and Jackie Welch at a total of uh, 443 pounds. Okay. Jerry Calhoun is the referee. And I guess we're about ready. We are about ready, and it's going to be uh, David Novak starting against Robert Gibson in the uh, in the match. They're looking for a chair for Chuck Malone to uh, sit down in. Because, of course, it isn't. Yeah, he needs a chair. That's. He's got one, I guess, yeah. He's got to be sitting down. Okay, now I think we're appropriately ready, and referee uh, Jerry Calhoun reminding Malone that if he gets up, he is going to be uh, causing the team of the bounty hunters to be disqualified. That's uh, David Novak in there with Robert Gibson. Jackie Wells, Robert Gibson. Look at those arm drags coming from the young Pensacola, Florida wrestler. He going up for the monkey flip, and big Jerry Novak just held on to the corner ropes in there and then dropped with that big elbow. Wow. Jackie Wells caught over there in between the two bounty hunters. There's a tag on David, and here he comes. Bounty hunter number one, David Novak, comes up. He planted that foot in there and did he nail it. Wow. Jackie hammered down with a body slam. Elbow drop, and Jackie caught right down across the side of the neck at a pressure point. Referee warning Gary Calhoun about, or rather, the referee Jerry Calhoun warning David Novak about pulling the hair, and he got a break, but it didn't do Jackie much good. There's a tag on Jerry Novak, and here he comes. Brother Jerry was popping what looked like to be a thumb to the throat of Jackie Welch. Jackie now shoots one to the midsection, but is raked across the eyes. Right out of the ring, and there goes Jackie down on the floor. Referee Jerry Calhoun saying, get back, get back. Coming back up again is Jackie Welch, but he is knocked back down, and Robert Gibson comes over there to tell the referee, hey, come on, let him back in the ring. Can't get the count starts again. Once again, Jackie back up on the ring apron, but uh, Jerry pounds him, makes a tag as uh, the referee sends him out of there and telling David to stay back. But David takes over and runs Jackie Welch right down into the corner where uh, Chuck Malone was sitting, and the count starts. And here comes Jerry around to stomp at Jackie Welch. But as he did, Robert Gibson comes flying across the ring and nails Jerry, and as after David, Chuck Malone down in front of him, jumped on Jackie and piled drived him right down in the floor. And the referee gets uh, David Novak and Robert Gibson broken up. Sends Jerry Novak out of the ring. And it's getting wild and woolly. Here comes Robert around to administer to Jackie Welch, referee at the count of five. Robert's saying, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's telling Malone was involved while the referee... Okay. It's going to end there, Dave, with Jackie Welch being counted out, so the match is over with. Rhubarb time, look out. Both Tommy Hunters and Robert and Jackie can't give him any help. Jackie's still jarred from that Malone move. And here comes uh, Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee. Bonnie Hunter has hopped to the ring as they slip out the 
other side and head for the dressing room. They're going to come out the winners. Referee Jerry Calhoun telling the guys to keep away. They're going to end up getting into a fine situation. The match was over with so that uh, Lawler and Dundee were not interfering in another match. Jerry and uh, Bill Dundee and Robert Gibson trying to get Jackie out of there and administer to him. Dave, how about your time on that one? Four minutes, 36 seconds. 4.36 when uh, the referee counted Jackie Welch out, unable to get back in the ring. Ten count on Jackie Welch, unable to get back up uh, into the ring in time. And with obvious reason, uh, Robert Gibson telling the referee as they're going out, still talking about the move Chuck Malone put on him while Robert and uh, David were involved. See if I can find my chair. I had to get in out there in a hurry. Um, so the official winners are going to be uh, the bounty hunters, as a matter of fact, in four minutes and 36 seconds. 36 seconds. Okay, we've got more action. Right now we're going to take time. Uh, look, Jack, let, me, let me tell you this. I, I want you to understand this. Uh, you come out telling me, get something straight. I want to get something straight with you. Fine. You have the option not to wrestle her. But let me tell you what the other side of the coin is. The fact of the matter is that you signed a contract with the Jarrett Welch Company to wrestle Heather Feather. I don't care what you say about it. I saw you sign it right out here, and you have the option. Fine. If you want to break that contract, then you can pack your bags and just leave the territory, and there won't be any management. What do you see? I can leave. It's very simple. When you sign the contract, if you want to break the contract with Jarrett Welch, fine. If you want to stay around with your boys and all, then you will wrestle. Now, the option is simply yours, Chuck Malone. It is a question of whether you want to, whether you want to show up and live up to the contract that you signed or whether you want to pack the bags. And I don't think there will be too many tears about it if you elect to take yourself out of here. The uh, people uh, sometimes have gotten a little bit tired of some of the actions of Chuck Malone, but I think it's pretty clear cut. It's your choice, Chuck, and uh, we'll just make that clear to you as long as you were making something clear to us. So... Uh, so I have got to wrestle this gorilla that belongs in a cage somewhere, right? Oh, you can always leave if you'd like to leave. If you don't want to break your contract, you will wrestle Heather Feather uh, in the action Monday night down at the Coliseum because it's on paper, and I think it's just a... a well, they tricked me in that contract. They tricked me into signing it. Chuck, your name is on the contract. Now, I don't care what it says. The name is on the contract, and you have an entire option. If you don't want to wrestle it, fine. Pack it up and take it on out. The Jarrett Welch Company, I'm certain, will not uh, want anybody around breaking a contract like that. You signed it, and the option is up to you. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Lance Russell. I'm going to wrestle that gorilla, and I'm going to get in that ring with her. And when I do, the blood's going to be in your hands. It's going to be all on yourself, Lance Russell, because I'm going to hit her so hard in the mouth that's going to straight both her eyeballs open. And the blood will be on your hands, and don't do it. Okay, fine, Chuck. Fine, Chuck. The opportunity to tell you that uh, it was... <laughs> it was, uh, uh, for the fans, a great, great night uh, when uh, you all won the Southern Tag title. Uh, but you've got, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, at the Coliseum, you've got yourself a uh, tremendous... Well, before we get into that, we're going to polish the belts up, and we're taking them down to Selma, Tennessee. That's walking tall country, right? I'm going to walk around my tippy toes so I don't feel out of place. <laughs> okay. We're going to be in summer tonight. We're going to be over there tonight. tonight. Yeah, let me, let me just say, this, this is a, a great situation for Bill and I to be in. We won the titles last week. We were very fortunate to do that. Now, the first thing we heard, that was Monday night, the first thing we heard Tuesday morning, the promotion called us and said, well, the bounty, hunt, the bounty hunters naturally want a return match. And we said, well, we don't really have to give them one, do we? They said, no, you don't. At least not for 30 days. You don't have to give anybody one. So we got to thinking. They said, but they want one really bad. And I told Bill, I said, you know, we may just give them that match, but let's add a little stipulation on there. Chuck Malone has been in everybody's <laughs> hair, so we decided to get in his hair. We told the promotion, if they want that match bad enough, if they want us to put up those belts, then Chuck Malone will have to put up his hair. And do you know that idiot agreed to do it? So what's going to happen down there Monday night you're talking about Chuck Malone packing his bags and leaving. What's going to happen Monday night in Memphis is this. He will probably leave because nobody is going to be able to stand the humiliation that he's going to suffer. He's going to get beat by a woman, and then he's going to have his head shaved. And after that, 
<laughs> Nobody be able to show their faces. Right. Well, he said he's going to be down there, so I know that. Handsome Jimmy. Yes, sir. You know, I got a, I got a hell of a deal, Daddy. I got a hell of a deal, baby. You know, Handsome Jimmy, the hottest <laughs> thing, baby, in the world, baby. You know, this is Star Wars, mama. You know, everybody wants to pay to see Handsome Jimmy. And what I want, what I want right now, I want to talk to the Kingfish. You know, Kingfish, and I want to talk to Superstar, my partner, Superstar. Can you imagine Handsome Jimmy, Superstar, and Kingfish? in the same ring at the same time with, with baby, Chuck Malone and the Bounty Hunters. What do you think about that, Stop. That's, that's, that's a great idea, and I believe we'd like to do that. But listen, hey, handsome. handsome. Will you just listen for a minute? Come back to us for one minute. It's a title match. That means you can't have a six-man title match, right? And the main thing we want is to scalp Chuck Malone, and we can't do that in a six-man tag, or he won't have it because the belt is on the line, and that's the only reason he'll put his hair on the line, right? Hey, brother, if that's the only thing you're worried about is Chuck Malone losing his hair, you know, handsome Jimmy will pull him bald-headed, daddy. I'll take his hair one at a time, daddy. I'll pull the man. Forget shaving the hair. Kingfish, do it, daddy. Do a little pull. You got a lot of pull here, baby. You got some pull, daddy. So pull handsome Jimmy in on the main event, daddy. (laughs) (laughs) Handsome, just like, you know, some things he doesn't understand. He's putting me on the spot here. See, here's what we're here's what we're trying to say, handsome. You're putting me in the middle and on the spot. I, like Bill said, I'd love it. I'd be a great main event, but it's a title match. If if we don't put up the titles, Chuck Malone's not going to put up his hair. So we're going to have a four man tag. What do you mean four man tag, man? I said I want a six man tag. This is what's happening. The people deserve a six man tag. They want to see a six man tag. This is what's happening. You know what, King Fish? I think I feel a little jealousy here. I think I feel. Hey, short wit, go play with some sharp people. I think I feel a little jealousy here, Kingfish. I think I feel a, just a little, you know, I'm getting some bad vibes. You know, I'm getting some bad vibes from Kingfish here, baby. Let me, uh, maybe later they can uh, get this thing together and uh, talk about a six-man or something like that. What we're trying to do, Handsome, is trying to tell you that we are the tag team champions. We're going to defend the belts. Not in a six-man tag, but in a four-man tag. There's no jealousy. Your your music was great, baby. I'll be the first one to admit it. It was fine. There's no jealousy, but we we can't have a six-man match and get his hair staked. And I think the people want to see Chuck Malone bald-headed more than they want to see a six-man tag. So that's what we're going to give them. Right. You know, Kingfish, and I want to tell you something right now, very honestly. I think you hold something against Handsome Jimmy. I think, baby, every time since Handsome Jimmy hit Memphis, I think since I hit Memphis, Tennessee, Daddy, you know Handsome Jimmy's the hottest property, Daddy, since Coca-Cola, baby. And I want to say something. I feel a little tension because, you know, the, the Kingfish is not as popular as it used to be because all the people dig Handsome Jimmy now. You understand? This is what's happening now, baby. Handsome Jimmy's what's happening now. You know, just just a few months, Handsome Jimmy's been in Memphis, Tennessee. Hey, already, Handsome Jimmy's got his own candy store. Go by, they say, Handsome Jimmy, since you get some free candy, fans. Do it for Handsome Jimmy, baby. That's Overton Square, Daddy. This is what's happening, baby. You think we're trying to cut you out of the main event, right? What your problem is, Handsome, is we can't cut you out of something you weren't cut in on to begin with. You're not in the main event. We're the main event. What the problem is, you're on a preliminary match. Do you know what a preliminary match is? That's where the promoters pr- pr- put preliminary wrestlers. That's where you are. That's the whole problem. Let me tell you the whole thing right now. I know exactly what it is, Daddy. You know you are jealous of Handsome's body, Daddy. You are jealous of my old lady, Daddy. You are jealous of my record, baby. You know FM 100 plays my record, and they they requested daily, daddy. They requested every minute, baby. You are jealous, daddy. You are jealous, baby. That's what's happening, Kingfish. You are jealous, you're sick man. You're very sick, baby. Let me tell you something, handsome Jimmy. I'm not jealous of you, because let me tell you just exactly what you are. No, you guys don't have to come out here. We'll settle this right now. It ain't no way I'm going to be jealous of a big fag-looking jerk like you. You've got bleach blonde hair. You've got those long, goofy handlebar mustache. You've got a tattoo painted on that queer ear of yours. And you've got one fingernail painted silver. Now, what's that for? Huh? You think I'm jealous of you? You're crazy. You're right, Daddy. I want to tell you what this is for, baby. This thumbnail is painted because handsome hitchhikes at night. And this is nothing. This thumb is nothing, Daddy, because you ought to see my toes. 
Yeah, you hitchhike at night. You know why you hitchhike at night? I don't think you hitchhike at night. Ever since you've been down in Mempho, as you like to call it, from the Big Apple, you bum rides off of me and Dundee. You didn't even bring a car down here. We have to haul your butt around and you call it back. Hitchhike at night, you don't hitchhike nowhere. I want to tell you something, baby, right now. This is what's happening, Daddy. Hit the gimme what's happening, baby. I want to tell you something right now. You did this boy wrong. You did this man wrong right here, your own flesh and blood. Your old lady's got skinny legs, and your old lady's old lady's got skinnier legs, Daddy. Let me tell you something, babe. The only thing you've done since you've been in Memphis is screwed up this boy's mind. You know what I did for him? I did nothing for him because that's what he needed done for him. He needed to make it on his on his own. What'd you do? You come along, you got his hair bleached out blind. He looks like a fag just like to, like you. You screwed his mind up. He don't know which way he's going because he's got his nose stuck so far up your rear end. Hey, he's got, hey, come on now. Let's right. Just keep my name out of it, okay? Yeah, that's it. Go ahead. Me. Stick with him. He's your real pal here. Look at him. Look what he's done for you. You're nothing, daddy. You're garbage, baby. You're garbage, daddy. If you want to prove this, daddy, get in that ring right now, baby. Go we prove this right get now. now. It's good, yeah. Thank you, man. Get it. Uh, okay, we'll get it back together here. Let's take time out, and we're going to be back with you in just a moment. Paul Green, from Hell's Kitchen, New York, Don Fargo, and his partner from Atlanta, Georgia, Big Bill Dromo. Going against them at a total of 439 pounds. From Lexington, Tennessee, Tommy Gilbert. And from Norfolk, Virginia, Terry Sawyer. One fall, 15-minute time limit, referee Bill Mack. Okay, there it is as the uh, robes come off. And uh, Tommy Gilbert and Terry Sawyer against uh, Donnie Fargo and Big Bill Dromo with Al Green. Gilbert, back in Fargo, onto the ropes. Referee Bill Mack call for a break. Gilbert stepped back to the center of the ring. Fargo with a headlock. I uh, gotta say, uh, uh, Terry Sawyer, it was a big thing for him to come out and say that. I talked to Terry about it. Terry thought he beat the fans. I mean, there's just no question about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, he's got confidence. He, it was a whale of a match, almost too close to call. And uh, he just was very disappointed in the outcome of it, but he's enough a man to come out and, and, and make a comment. Indeed. Takes a big man, no doubt about it. And it was a close match. One of the judges, I recall, uh, even scored it as, a, as even. Right. Yeah. Big Bill Dromo in there now. With a face lock on Gilbert, back into the corner. Referee Bill Mack trying to get him out of the corner. They are off the ropes, back near the center of the ring. Gilbert gets the tag, and here is Terry Sawyer, former Olympic wrestler. Fine move. There's one up right there. He comes up with an arm bar on Big Bill Dromo. Dromo from Atlanta, Georgia, makes the tag on his partner. This is Donnie Fargo. He's a rugged veteran. Fargo yanking Sawyer down to the mat, possibly hair pulling. Sawyer reacts well to it, though. Converts the hole to his own advantage. Fargo makes a tag and Bill Dromo back in. Dromo weighs in about 260. Stenciled across the back of his tights. The word, words, heart punch. He's a rugged one too. He fired the right hand. That looked like the forearm from here, and I think the referee has just indicated to Dromo that it was indeed forearm, not a fist. 
Gilbert in the head scissors. Dromo tags on Fargo. Dromo mighty slow about breaking the hold. After the tag and Don Fargo already in the ring. Gilbert. Right hand doubled up. Referee Bill Mack telling him, uh, uh keep the fist open, Tommy. I know they double teamed you, but they were out. Before the uh, disqualification count. Dromo holding Gilbert back on the rope. Fargo working at him with a right hand. Four and a half minutes gone in the match. Gilbert back in the corner of Dromo and Don Fargo. Dangerous place to be. Harry Sawyer in there trying to help him out to uh, even up some of this double team tactic. Fargo makes the tag. Dromo. Fargo in there now with a double team. Perry Sawyer comes in. This time, he's able to even it up. And Sawyer, even Fargo out of the action. Oh! Reversal by Don Fargo. Terry Sawyer slammed into Bill Dromo. But Tommy Gilbert now continues to work. Big Bill Dromo. Five and a half minutes. Gone in the match. There's the hold as Tommy Gilbert has Bill Dromo, but Dromo trying to crawl over to the corner. Gets a tag on Don Fargo. Dromo stands up. Dave, during, while this match is going on, I want to take this opportunity to personally apologize to the fans. Uh, Lawler and Valiant, both of them lost their temper, and of course, when they lose their temper, sometimes they, well, the man just doesn't know what he's saying. But we're not going to tolerate that. I want to apologize to everybody for it. Of course, there's nothing I can do about it afterwards. I have fined both Lawler and Valiant $500 for letting things get out of control, and I can assure you that it'll never happen again. Okay, thank you, Jerry. We appreciate it. Uh, the word from uh, Jerry Jarrett on uh, some of the language and actions that occurred out here uh, a few moments ago between Jerry Lawler and handsome Jimmy Valiant. Again, to repeat, uh, promoter Jerry Jarrett says both wrestlers have been fined. Just to emphasize that that is not tolerated by Jerry West Wrestling. Hey, Sawyer refused to tag up there. Oh, Dave. I missed then. that. Yes, Gilbert went over to tag him, and the referee says he came for a tag, and Sawyer says, I don't have to tag anybody. He kicked yeah. out of the crap. Yeah, Perry is the one out here apologizing a few moments ago to, uh, to Tommy Gilbert, and now he refuses to tag. Gilbert's still in there. Dromo not able to get the three count as yet, though. Big Bill Dromo makes the tag on his partner. Don Fargo. Fargo with a chop. Top of the boot. That's legal. Gilbert. Fighting back. Big right hand. Little momentum. And he knocks Fargo off his feet. But Gilbert goes down to the mat too. Fargo. Gets the tag on Dromo, and there it is again. Tommy Gilbert goes for the tag, and Terry Sawyer turns and walks out of the corner. So Gilbert, taking a beating from both Dromo and Don Fargo, has to stay in there as Sawyer, for the second time, refuses the tag. I'm really uh, surprised at that, Dave. Uh, Terry, I know the heat's hot with Dromo and, and Fargo, but I'm surprised he won't step in the kitchen and help out a little bit. That's indeed right. We've just passed the eight-minute mark of the match, and it's double team. Well, this Dromo, after he makes the tag, he is mighty slow about leaving that ring every time. A little applause for his partner, Don Fargo. Dromo steps in from outside. Gilbert having to fight them both by himself. But Terry Sawyer refused to involve himself twice. 
Gilbert over to the corner. And Gilbert, understandably, takes a shot at Sawyer. After for the third time, Sawyer refused to pass. Sawyer in there now. He slugs Gilbert. Grobo drops with the elbow. It's a cover. One, two, and a three count. What of a turn of events. As Terry Sawyer, all of a sudden, midway through the match, decides he's not going to take the tag from Tommy Gilbert. Tommy was in there about four or five minutes of the nine. Uh, look out. Down here on the floor, Sawyer challenges Gilbert to come on out. Gilbert steps down onto the floor. Wisely, Tommy didn't uh, slug him out here. That would have been a fine for Tommy had, uh, had he hit him. But uh, the new rule's in effect. 9.03 was the time of the match. Nine minutes and three seconds, and uh, the official winners of the match will uh, be Bill Dromo and Don Fargo. The official winners, Dromo and Fargo. It was a disappointment that... Yes. Hey, Tommy. Now, come on. Now, let, let's, let's get it out. Just one. Okay. There you go, Luke. Thank you. Okay, coming to the ring right now, Steve Brody, Coco Ware, a couple of young fellas. Uh, well, if we can get them separated here, we'll end up with the introduction, okay, Dave? All right, this is going to be a one-fall, ten-minute time living match. Introducing from Pompano Beach, Florida, 216 pounds, Steve Brody. And on the right of your screen, from Union City, Tennessee, 215 pounds, Coco Ware. This match, one-fall, ten-minute time limit, referee Jerry Calhoun. Okay, bell time, we're off and running in there. Steve Brody, Pompano Beach, Coco Ware, Union City, Tennessee. Uh, he is a stocky one, this Coco Ware. Boy, he is big through the uh, arms and shoulders in there. His legs, you take a look at his, uh, look at his thighs in there. He's muscular and really, uh, really strong. Steve Brody taken down and rolled over, but right at the ropes, and it wasn't even necessary for referee Jerry Calhoun to say, break it. Coco backed it up. Steve came right back to his feet again, and they're ready to tie it up at the center of the ring. Brown, but look at uh, Brody ride with him till Coco sat out in great shape and came through for a release on it from Steve Brody. One fall match, referee Jerry Calhoun, Coco eyeing him. Steve Brody tangles, goes with a top wrist lock. Hanging on. Hey, but not for long as Coco Ware doubles it under, brings it up behind in a hammer position. Brody moves down beautiful, hooked that leg and took him straight forward. Good move from Steve Brody on Coco Ware. Coco had made a great reversal himself, and then Brody, with that uh, leg lock as he rolled down, hooked him and took him straight forward. They're back at it in the middle of the ring again. Tie it up. Whips around, bars at the shoulder. Now, at arm's length. He's adding a little extra pain and sorrow on the wrist as he's busting that arm, uh, that hand straight back. Coco reverses it, grabs Steve Brody. And Steve Brody taken down in the center of the ring. Some good solid wrestling action up there between a couple of youngsters who are just in there. Too much work in this one. They've been listening and breaking uh, very quickly, and as a matter of fact, sometime when they realize they're tied in the ropes. At one time there, they broke uh, before he even got into the area, yep. really, to, uh, to say tap him on the back or anything. So. On the ropes, referee calls for a break, and Brody takes it right straight back. We're back to the center of the ring again. Uh, relatively the same size. They've got a good balance in there. Yeah, one pound weight advantage is all for Steve Brody. And uh, Coco Ware has been impressive in recent weeks. Uh, he's he's uh, gaining experience quickly. Standing side headlock, Brody trying to figure out how to get out. Oh, he tried to whop, uh, whop him off to the ropes in there, and Coco held on tight once again. He's hanging on to that uh, standing side headlock. Brody finding out about those ears and all those kind of things. It'll be warm when he gets out of that one, I can tell you for a fact. Coco mares him straight over and down, a dandy. Right, I mean. He's got springs of steel in his leg. He really can get up in the air. Three drop kicks in a row. He goes in there for a cover. One, two, three. 
Brody almost beat the count, Dave, on the kickout, but he was right in behind the third count, and it is going to be a victory for Coco in there. The uh, three drop kicks in a row is what did it. That uh, was able to... Uh, Coco was able to get the pin on him, and in five minutes, 34 seconds of action. Good match. Yes, sir, you better believe it. And both guys... Uh, wrestle well in there. Brody ends up on the short side of it. He missed Let's it. Let's say real quick, I want to apologize to all the fans out there because like you said, when you lose your temper, you don't think about what you're saying. But I ain't apologizing to Van because he's a jerk and anytime he wants to get okay. me in the ring, he knows where he can find okay, me. Okay, fine. Let's uh, get on to it and uh, get the introductions and then whatever time we have left. We'll get the tag match underway, David. This one goes to the expiration of time, introducing it a total of 501 pounds from Belfast, Ireland, the Kelly Twins, Mike and Pat. Going against them in this match, a total of 458 pounds from Australia, the superstar, Bill Dundee. From Memphis, Tennessee, the king, Jerry Lawler. This match to the expiration of time, referee Bill Mack. We don't get the jackets off. We're not even going to get to start the opening bell. So we get somebody out. Okay, it's Mike Kelly starting against Bill Dundee. We're ready for it. Not too much time. Time definitely a factor in this expiration of time match. But we're underway. Mike Kelly. Dundee back on the ropes. Referee Bill Mack there. Oh, Dundee. Right into action against the bigger Kelly. Back in the corner, Dundee makes the tag and the king in there against Mike Kelly. Mike back to his corner. He did not make a tag on his brother, so it's still Mike Kelly in there. Waller off the rope. We only have about one minute left before our time expires, and we'll have to ring the bell. One minute. Kelly's now make a tag. This will be Pat coming in. Little hip throw by Kelly and Lawler on the mat. Referee Bill Mack starting the count. He's only able to get a one count though before Lawler can uh, pull that right shoulder seconds. up. One half minute left in our expiration of time. Fifteen seconds left. Time running out. Oh, Kelly almost ran into a fist by Bill Dundee. He stopped. Lawler got him from behind. Time winding down, and there it is. The time has run out. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, we uh, would have been nice to have a lot more time for the match, but... Uh, we are, in fact, out of time. The bell has to be rung, and that is going to be it. A short match. Interesting, nonetheless, the action between the Kellys, Mike and Pat, Lawler and Dundee. Minute 36, time has run out. Time has expired in there, and I'm very sorry we didn't get to see more of the Kellys against Lawler and Dundee. Uh, these Kelly boys have been impressive. We said that a little bit earlier, and obviously Lawler and Dundee know where it's all about when they get inside that ring. So it's going to end up in a draw as our time has expired, and we're going to be back.